Hey everybody and welcome to this screening of the Crazy Wise film. I'm Will Hall, I'm a therapist, I'm also a survivor of a schizophrenia diagnosis. I do a lot of work with people around their spiritual process of their learning as spiritual people, their discovery, and including their discovery of themselves as shamans and as people who are learning from traditions of shamanism and using shamanism. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, the relationship between shamanism and psychiatric medications. I don't think this gets talked about enough, and I think it's very important. Um, first of all, I should say that the movement that I'm part of and the values that I work from are really from a pro-choice point of view. So I work with people who are taking medication, who are not taking medication, who are somewhere in between on that process of learning and discovery. It's really about respecting each person's individual choice. So the question is, well, can you be a spiritual person and take psychiatric medications? Of course you can. Of course you can. Many, many people who are very deeply involved in spiritual practice, including the practices and traditions that would be called shamanism, are taking some psychiatric medication. It's not mutually exclusive at all. Again, it's a very individual question. Each person has to find that out for themselves. But I want to go a little bit more deeply into what are some of the issues around psychiatric medications and shamanism. First of all, what do I mean by shamanism? And it's an overused word. It's a word that has been taken out of its context. And it's important to recognize that it's a word that's often caught up in racist and colonial traditions. So we have to be very careful about the power relations around the word shamanism. We don't want to appropriate another cultural tradition. We don't want to claim a cultural tradition that is not our own. The Traditions of shamanism are rooted in very, very ancient indigenous beliefs and practices and cultures that are alive today. And if you want to be part of those practices, you need to train with the guidance and the oversight and the authorization of those traditions and not um, be disrespecting the authenticity of shamanic cultures and shamanic heritage. So it's very, very important that we make a distinction that the word shamanism in the West has come to mean something very distinct and something very different. We need to be clear about that. So I have a mixed race heritage. Um, my ancestry is American Indian on my mother's side, but I didn't grow up in that culture. So my experience is not to claim the American Indian culture as my own and present myself in that way, but instead to be part of this broader understanding of what shamanism is. And this is based on the idea from anthropology that if you compare cultures around the world, there are tremendous similarities. And that's what we mean by shamanism as a broader umbrella term for these similarities and these commonalities. What are those commonalities? Uh, first of all, it's that someone who becomes a healer or who becomes a the community a mediator with the divine, the, um, the medicine person, that um, role of being a shaman doesn't just come because the person decides one day that they want to go to shaman school. They have to have a calling. They have to have a destiny. And that calling and destiny comes through some kind of initiation process that's usually based on some kind of illness or accident. And as the film Crazy Wise discusses, that um, illness is psychosis. It's identical to psychosis. It's just treated and responded to in a different cultural context. So, so one of the key commonalities of what we call shamanism is the initiation into a calling through an illness or through madness. Uh, sometimes it could also be addiction. It could be like being struck by lightning or an accident or being attacked by an animal. But there's some calamity. There's some illness. Often it looks like psychosis that is the initiation process, that there's a death rebirth that takes place between the ordinary identity and the rebirth to the shamanic identity. So the initiation through crisis is a key part of what we call shamanism. And the second key part is that a shaman learns how to use altered states to discover gifts and bring them back 
to make them useful for the community. So visionary states, trance states, we think of shamanism being related often with drumming. Uh, the drum is found throughout different cultures. The um, use of dancing, the use of ritual to invoke and create trance that creates an altered state. And by going into an altered state, you go into a different realm, a spirit realm, where there are helpers and there are tasks to be performed and information that can be brought back to provide healing for um, this reality. And the um, use of altered states also includes in many cultures, but not all, different plant medicines that people will take a psychedelic drug to go into that visionary state. Um, not necessarily, but that's also very common in different cultures. So those are the two main features that I think we can uh, call this overarching um, term shamanism. One would be the initiation through crisis into the destiny of being a spirit healer or a medicine person. And the second is the use of visionary trance, um, altered states of consciousness. So with that understanding, we can now look at the relationship between psychiatric medications and shamanism. So first of all, everybody is gonna be different, but I think in terms of someone developing themselves as a shaman and responding to that calling, we have to ask what is the role of the psychiatric drug in helping or hindering the person from reaching that calling and being able to use that altered state experience in a positive and a useful way as part of the gifts that they have. Is the psychiatric medication useful to that person? Um, for a lot of people, uh, psychiatric medications can really get in the way. Uh, psychiatric medications can really uh, block their access to their intuition, to their creativity, to their spiritual and their psychic abilities. Um, the psychiatric medications often cause very bad adverse effects that can be very, very damaging to health. They can alter our thinking, they can alter our uh, minds, they can alter our personality. So there's a lot of dangers of psychiatric medications. So often one of the things that people need to do is figure out a way to reduce and come off their medications. And I've written a guide, the Harm Reduction Guide to Coming Off Psychiatric Drugs. There are many, many different uh, resources and tools that people can access now for helping them to come off of medications. But it may not be that the psychiatric medications are a hindrance and an obstacle. They may actually be helpful. How do we know when psychiatric medications are helpful? Well, often the shamanism involves taking an alt a substance that creates an altered state in order to go into a different reality. But we can also think about psychiatric medications as serving the opposite function. Often the psychiatric drugs will help a person bridge from the altered state back into this reality. So a good example is uh, sleep. Someone is sleep deprived, they go into an altered state because of the sleep deprivation, and then they would use a psychiatric medication to get them back grounded in this reality. Now that's not how it works for a lot of people. Sometimes people find their psychiatric medications can make them feel less grounded and less connected with this reality. But often people find that their psychiatric medications help bring them out of an altered state that has become overwhelming or too much or it's too extreme or it's too um, out of control or it's not serving their needs and their purposes and ultimately their uh, goals in terms of their developing themselves as a spiritual person. So psychiatric medications can be understood as a bridge back to this reality. Now, you'll notice that I'm not talking about in, in, things in terms of diseases. I'm not talking about bipolar or clinical depression or schizophrenia because my understanding is that's not how psychiatric drugs work. Essentially, psychiatric medications, and whether this is antipsychotics or antidepressants or mood stabilizers or anti-anxiety drugs, Essentially, these also are drugs that create altered states. They make us feel normal in the altered state, but a lot of people will talk about drinking coffee or um, smoking cigarettes as a way of, of feeling more normal. What those psychiatric medications are doing is not treating a disease. Anybody who takes a bipolar drug like lithium is gonna feel those effects, whether or not you have a diagnosis of bipolar or not. 
These are tranquilizing, sedating, calming drugs, or they may be stimulating drugs. They may also be um, associated with a placebo effect and an expectation effect. They may be relaxing. They may help get, get your stress down. They may dampen and get symptoms under control. But basically how they're doing that is not by treating a disease or targeting psychosis. They're just creating an altered state. So just as alcohol creates an altered state that can help us with our anxiety sometimes if we're at a party, um, for example, psychiatric medications also give us effects that we may feel as beneficial or we may not. Again, it's individual, it's personal. So that's really the way that you measure the usefulness of a psychiatric medications are the effects of this altered state that the medication is giving you. Are those useful? From the perspective of someone who is developing their shamanism, who's developing their spiritual capacities, I think you have to look very carefully at each medication and how it's offering benefits or offering different kinds of harms or risks in the context of the whole person's life, including in the context of their spiritual practice. Now, when people are interested in reducing their medications or coming off medications, there are some risks and dangers. One of them is that sometimes there can be terrible withdrawal effects. Your brain and your body and your mind become adjusted to being on the drug. So if you come off, you get withdrawal effects. Sometimes if you come off more slowly, you can get less withdrawal effects. But sometimes the side effects are so bad that people don't want to come off slowly. And again, it's, it's everybody's choice. But generally speaking, if you reduce the medication more slowly, you're going to have less side effects. Now, it's important to recognize that one of the withdrawal effects of psychiatric medications is psychosis. If you come off of an antipsychotic drug or you come off of a drug like lithium, especially if you come off too quickly, you can trigger a psychotic crisis. And this is um, especially true if the withdrawal is creating sleep deprivation because sleep deprivation can itself cause tremendous um, emotional distress, including a psychotic crisis. So if you are considering um, reducing or coming off your medications, I advise you to become informed and to be cautious, to be aware of the withdrawal effects and to develop a plan, develop a strategy, get support and to think about going very slowly and giving yourself time to adjust and especially giving yourself the opportunity to find alternative ways of managing your states, um, alternative ways of managing your difficult emotions. If the psychiatric drug has been helping you to feel less anxious or to help you to get a lid on your paranoia or to get you to sleep or to not go into a manic state, then that's helpful. And if you want to start reducing that medication, you have to find some alternative way of achieving those same results without the medication. And there's many, many different alternatives that people can try, but I think we need to be flexible. That if the medication is useful to you, then it might be something you want to continue to do at this point. If you've been reducing the medication and it's starting to become too overwhelming and the alternatives you're trying to get into place really aren't serving you, it might be valuable to go back up on the medication. People sometimes have a backup supply of medications um, for when they need them. Sometimes if someone uh, goes into difficult sleep issues, they start to get sleep deprived, they might take a medication on occasion to just help them with their sleep. So in general, I think that um, we need to be open-minded and flexible. The reality is that shamanism is a relationship to altered states that uses altered states in a healing way. And I think that can also be true of psychiatric medications. If we're aware, aware of the risks, we're aware of the dangers, that we can tap into some of the benefits and use um, the psychiatric medications in a way that serves us, including serving us in developing ourselves as spiritual beings and developing ourselves, if that's our calling and if that's our destiny, as shamans. So thanks a lot for this opportunity to speak with you. And um, please feel free to check out my website, which is willhall.net. You can also um, take a look at some writing that I've done, the Harm Reduction Guide, to coming off psychiatric drugs, um, the book that I wrote, Outside Mental Health, Voices and Visions of Madness, and also an essay I wrote uh, called The Crash 
course in urban shamanism. All of those publications are available for free on the internet. All right, thanks a lot.